Hello and welcome to this presentation where we will go through and explain some of the important concepts in physics of ultrasound. It's vital to have some knowledge of basic physics in order to understand how ultrasound images are generated. Let's have an overview of what we will be covering. In this series of lectures, we will go through the definition of sound and ultrasound. We will look at the properties of sound waves and how ultrasound interacts with tissues. This is vital for image formation and explains many features such as artifacts. We will then look at knobology and how to optimize ultrasound images. In the last section, we will look at artifacts and probe controls for transesophageal echocardiography. Let's now go through the properties of sound waves and how we generate images from ultrasound. What is sound? Sound is produced by mechanical vibration leading to formation of a wave of vibrating particles. The particles in the medium through which the sound propagates undergoes areas of rarefaction and compression. The waves that are produced are longitudinal in nature when passing through air or liquid. Sound waves passing through solids are transverse in nature. This is shown in the diagram here. The vibration of particles in the medium concerned leads to propagation of the wave through the medium. When the wave reaches the listener, it is perceived as sound. The figure here shows the particles in the medium that are still. When sound waves pass through the medium, areas of compression and rarefaction occur as the sound wave travels through the medium. The particles in the medium vibrate to move the sound wave through the medium. The areas of compression and rarefaction constitute the sound wave as it propagates through the medium. Note how the particles are closed together in areas of compression and further apart in areas of rarefaction. We can represent the sound wave as a sine wave as shown in the diagram here. The components of the sine wave can be described as amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. Amplitude describes the height of maximal compression above the baseline. Wavelength describes the distance between two nearest points of equal pressure and density. We can now describe the relationship of the components of wave further in terms of frequency, velocity, and wavelength. Frequency is described as number of wavelengths per unit time. One cycle is equivalent to one wavelength. As explained before, one wavelength is the distance between two nearest peaks or throughs. Frequency is described in the units of hertz, where one hertz is equivalent to one cycle or one wavelength per second. Frequency is inversely related to wavelength. Waves with a longer wavelength will have a lower frequency. Conversely, waves with shorter wavelengths will have a higher frequency. Wavelength and frequency are inversely related as shown in the equation here. Velocity describes the speed of propagation of the sound wave through the medium. Velocity is equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength. It is dependent on the medium through which the sound wave travels through. The speed of the sound depends on the density and the elasticity of the medium through which it travels. In general, sound travels faster in liquids than in gases and quicker in solids than in liquids. The greater the elasticity and the lower the density, the faster sound travels in a medium. The velocity of sound waves depends on the medium through which it travels, and frequency is constant. As waves travel between mediums, the wavelength will therefore change. Here we can see the change in wavelength when sound travels between mediums of differing densities and elasticity. The velocity of sound in different mediums is shown in the table. For purposes of medical ultrasound, the machine assumes a constant velocity of 1540 meters per second through tissues. This assumption is often responsible for some of the imaging artifacts that occur, and is important to appreciate. We will continue with part 2 of this presentation in a separate video.